Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Tonight's unbelievable urban legend, Gold Coins. The story of the gold coins is an urban legend that can be heard all over the city of Cordoba in Spain. Over the years, it has passed from person to person by word of mouth. According to the legend, in the center of Cordoba, somewhere, there is an old, dilapidated house that is said to be haunted. The house is very large, has many rooms. All of the floors are covered in black tiles. Many years ago, this house was owned by one of the most important and wealthy families in the city. The family consisted of only three people, a married couple and their eight-year-old daughter. They also had an entire team of servants and maids who lived with them. One night, when the little girl was lying in bed unable to sleep, she heard some noises in the corridor outside her room. Now being a child and very curious, she slowly opened the door of her bedroom and looked out into the long, dark corridor. At the end of the hallway, she could make out a small figure crouching down. As her eyes adjusted to the darkness, she was surprised to see a young boy, the same age as herself. He was carrying a lighted candle, and he was lifting one of the small stone slabs on the tiled floor. She watched as the young boy took something from his pocket and placed it beneath the tile. After he replaced the tile, the boy suddenly vanished into thin air. The girl couldn't believe what she was seeing. She looked back down the corridor and noticed that one of the maids had been peeking out of her own bedroom door and had witnessed the same strange scene. The maid grabbed a candle and came hurrying over to the little girl. They both knew what they had seen. This young boy was a ghost. Together they cautiously approached the place where the boy had been crouching. They lifted the tile and discovered that there was a large hole underneath it. Peering down into the hole, by the dim light of the candle, they noticed something glittering. The maid held up the slab as she lowered the little girl into the hole. The child could not believe what she had found. There was an entire pile of gold coins. Shaking with excitement, she gathered up the coins and handed them out to the maid. Then the maid grabbed her by the hand and pulled her out of the hole. They replaced the tile and it fit back perfectly, looking like it had never been moved. The maid could hardly believe her luck and the child could barely contain her excitement. Both of them decided that they should keep the discovery of the gold coins a secret. The maid warned the little girl not to mention anything about their find to her parents or to the other servants. The next night, at the same time, the girl and the maid were peeking out of their bedroom doors, eagerly waiting for the little ghost boy to appear. They watched as the spectral figure made its way down the corridor, lifted a tile, and placed more gold coins into the hole beneath. After he disappeared, the maid lowered the girl into the hole under the slab so that she could retrieve the coins. Night after night, they repeated the same process. It seemed as if the treasure would never end, it would never run out. Each time, by the light of a candle, the girl got down into the small, narrow hole under the tile and gave the coins to the maid, who put them into a large sack. One night, the candle had almost run out, and as the maid lowered the little girl into the hole, the light started to flicker. The maid told the little girl to hurry back. She had to get out of the hole before the candle went out because they already had enough money. She pulled the little girl out of the hole, but at the last moment one of the coins fell from the child's hand. Without thinking, the little girl jumped back down into the hole again. The maid tried to catch her, but in doing so, she let go of the tile and it slammed down, covering the hole entirely. Suddenly, the candle went out. The maid began to panic. In the darkness, she tried to make her way down the corridor to her bedroom to fetch another candle. It was pitch black, and she couldn't see a thing. She had to feel her way along the wall until she reached her bedroom door. Searching desperately in the dark, she couldn't find any candles. So with a lot of difficulty, the maid felt her way down the darkened corridor until she came to the kitchen. 
She rummaged through the drawers and eventually came across another candle. She lit this and quickly returned to the corridor. To her horror, the maid realized that she couldn't remember which tile the little girl was under. In the dim light, she searched and searched, prying at each potential tile, but the corridor was so long and so wide and there were so many tiles that she was unable to find the right one. Finally, she gave up and, clutching her bag of gold coins, she went back to bed. In the morning, the girl's parents woke up to find that their daughter had disappeared. They questioned the servants, but each one said they had no idea where the little girl could be. A complete search of the entire house was organized, but it turned up nothing. The distraught parents were baffled by their daughter's mysterious disappearance. The maid decided not to say anything about what had happened that night. A few days later, the mother was crying in her bedroom when she heard a voice calling out. She recognized it immediately. It was the voice of her daughter. The little girl was crying out for someone to help her. Please, please help me. Let me out of here, please. The mother searched the house again. Sometimes the screams seemed to be coming from one part of the house, but when she got there, the screams sounded like they were coming from somewhere else. Try as they might, the parents could not pinpoint the source of the screams. The father dug up the floors, demolished walls, and punched holes in ceilings, all in an effort to find out where the little girl's cries for help were coming from. After almost destroying the interior of the house, the parents were forced to admit defeat. For months, they lived on in that building, listening to the incessant cries of their beloved daughter, unable to do anything to find her. All of this took its toll on their mental health, even their physical health. Eventually, the mother lost her mind. She committed suicide. The father, devastated by grief, and the loss of the two most important women in his life moved away and died of a heart attack a few years later. The people of Cordoba say that this is a true story. The house is still standing today. According to the legend, if you go there at night, they say you can still hear the screams of a little girl pleading for help, pleading to be let out. The house has become famous all over Spain, and sometimes teenagers visit the place at night to test their courage and see if they can find any gold. Others go there to explore the huge building in an attempt to discover where the remains of the lost little girl are located. As yet, no one has been brave enough to spend the entire night there. The house is now boarded up, and the neighbors often call police because of the strange cries and screams that come from within. They say that when police arrive to investigate, the only thing that they find is an old candle sitting on an old stone tile in the middle of a hallway floor. So stay scary, my wildlings, and make the most of your nights.